was the planting that was shown to John. So all those that, do you understand what I'm saying? Now do we get it? Yes. So you, you have to understand that Adam was immortal in Eden. But not, not all the beings that were there were immortal. The, the Nephilim that were there were not immortal. You understand what I'm saying? But yet they, but yet they, were, they were allowed in what? In Eden. Close to the region where Adam was. So I want to make that very clear. Let's read. Second Ezra 3 6. And thou leadest him into paradise, mm -hmm. which they are and are planted, mm -hmm. before ever the earth came forward. And thou lead him into paradise, which thy right hand had planted, which your right hand had planted before ever the earth came forward. Because paradise was already was already created already in the third heaven already. Do you understand what I'm saying? Paradise was, was already created and placed in the third heaven. That's why Paul saw it there in John chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. That's why the most I was telling Baruch in 2 Baruch chapter 4, verse 1 to 7. That this, this which you are seeing now, the earthly Jerusalem you are seeing now, is not that which was revealed to me beforehand. When I took counsel to make paradise, it's not that which was revealed to me beforehand. When I took counsel to make paradise and showed it to Adam before he sinned, and showed it to Adam because the most I brought it down, the most I planted it in Eden, then he now brought Adam from outside Eden into, the, into Eden and showed him what he planted there. So that Adam will do... So Adam will do what? Rule in that region. That is the king's seat. That's why he told Adam in Genesis, Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 to 29. He says, he says, be fruitful and multiply. And what? And subdue the earth and have dominion over everything. Because Adam was sitting as a king and as a prophet and as a priest. That's why, that's why you see the manifestation of this power that he received, which is the bread, was revealing him. When Adam saw Eve, he told who, who, Eve who she was. He was teaching, he was, he was lecturing. You understand what I'm saying? Then the dominion should represent kingship. You understand what I'm saying? That's why you see during crisis time, what, what did Christ say? What did the elder say in, in, in Revelation chapter 5 from verse 8 to 10? You understand? And, and in Revelation, Revelation chapter 1 verse 4 to 6, he said, And thou hast made us kings and priests, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Kings and priests, kings and priests. Because Adam was a king in his time, and he was a priest. And those in, in Revelation that are speaking, the elders, they will be immortal like Adam in the beginning too. That's why, and, and nothing is new under the sun. So when they come, there will be kings and priests. A priest to teach, a king to rule, to have dominion. Do you understand what I'm saying? And we shall be kings, and we shall be kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. That's what they said. And we shall reign, reign on the earth as kings and priests. That's why that's why prophecy tells you in, 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 in Micah chapter 4, verse 1. Chapter 4, verse 1 to 2, and all the nation will come to Jerusalem and say, Come, let us go up to, to the mountains of the of the of the house of, of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will learn of his path. For the Lord shall go forth of Zion, and the word of God from Jerusalem. That's when, that's when the resurrection begins, when Christ comes. All nations will come and say, let us go up to Jerusalem to learn from the children of Israel. Because they are the king, they are the one that will do what? Sit as kings and priests. Mm -hmm. That's what the elders were saying. In, in Rev chapter 5, from verse, from verse 8 to 10, and chapter 1, from verse 4 to 6, of the book of Revelations. He's saying the same thing. So once you, once you understand the mystery of the kingdom and the code and the parables, okay, and how to break down precept carefully, you understand all, all you understand all the pieces, all the you understand the, the true interpretation, okay, of the kingdom. Is that understood? Yes. For those that have years to hear, this lesson is for them. This lesson is not for those that don't have years to hear. Mm. It's not for them at all. Now, second Ezra three verse seven. Read it again. Second Ezra three verse seven. So in verse 6, so in verse 6 it says, And thou lead him into paradise, which your right hand has planted, before ever the earth came forward. Before ever the earth came forward. So even before the most I created the earth in, in, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. The most eh? paradise, exists. paradise already exists already in the third heaven. Now, for you to know where does he exist, the Bible gives you a hint in Corinthians 12, verse 1 to 4, that it exists in the third heaven. So when the most I want to plant it, that's what he's telling Ezra. For you to understand what the most I revealed to Adam in, in Genesis chapter 2, where he said that the most I God planted a garden east of Eden. He's not referring to a physical garden, he's speaking in parables. You understand what I'm saying? Let's read. Second Ezra 3, verse 7. And unto him that giveth commandment to love their way, mm -hmm. which he transgressed. So, so, so afterward, when the most I bring, bring into Adam the bread of life, the most I God in verse 6 led him into paradise. Okay, then in verse 7, and gave it him commandments. So watch how Ezra is taking us step after step. God gave him the Holy Spirit about his commandments. Now take it, take it to that life. 
and commandments and the bread. Those, those, that's why I taught us the last lesson before under the bread of life, under, under the w, WOAC series about the bread of life. All this lesson will, will lead us to understand this lesson about the tree of life. Now let's read some of them. As grace. Mm -hmm. And immediately that upon his death in him. So God gave Adam commandments to love his way. To love his way. Now, somebody will, somebody, now, now we'll, we'll, we'll get here. And unto him thou giveth your commandments to love your way, which he transgressed. And immediately thou appointed death in him. So Adam does not know death before. But once he transgressed, Adam knew death. Because Adam began to, because what gave him life before? He gave him commandment to know the most high's way. So the commandment, which is the life out of the bread, is the, 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 the command, the life represents the commandment, which when Adam still keep, Adam was still immortal. But once Adam began to transgress that commandment, Adam now knew death because Adam began to obey the commandment of another spirit. Take it to this very precept. It's very deep. This is a deep lesson. This, 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 this lesson is not for babe. I don't expect babe to understand this lesson. They can go and play with the stones of the field or shoot, shoot kites in the air. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm speaking this lesson to those that have wisdom. Those that already have wisdom will understand what I'm saying. Those that don't have wisdom can never understand this lesson. Even, even from the onset when I begin to teach, they can never understand all the things I say. Read. And unto him that give us commandment to love their way, uh -huh. which he transgressed. Mm -hmm. And greatly he appointed his death in him, mm -hmm. and in his generations, mm -hmm. of whom came nations, mm -hmm. tribes, mm -hmm. people, and kindreds, out of number. Genesis 2, let's go back there. Now remember, this lesson, I did not write it down. This lesson is straight off the brain. So every, every precept that I'm quoting is from my brain. It's straight meditation. I did not prepare this. I did not write down this lesson for no reason. So bear with me with precept. Genesis 2, let's go. That is it was a spirit for most at a point death. Mm -hmm. I mean the death must be a spirit. It, exactly, the death must be a spirit that's walking. Read. To the book of Genesis 2, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Genesis 2, verse 8. Let's go. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. So and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. So the, the garden that the most high planted is actually paradise. So what God did, what God revealed, that's the planting. The, the planting means to reveal. God revealed paradise in Eden. Uh-huh. So paradise came down. Remember, paradise was created before the earth was created. So paradise was revealed to Adam. That's what he's saying in verse 8. You have to you have to you have to deal with the principles of understanding, which is precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, dear a little. If you if you if I have not read second Ezra 3 and other precepts, I will not understand what this planting that is speaking about here. The the garden of the paradise was created before the earth. It was created in the heaven already. You understand what I'm saying? It was a gift from the most high God. The, the, the land, the garden was already here on the earth. You understand what I'm saying? The land was already here on the earth. They already land trees on, on the earth already. So let's read. Everything, everything that the Mosai is dealing with here are parables. The Mosai is using the fiscal uh, the fiscal planting. As how a farmer will go and plant seed on the ground and something will grow out of the ground. The Mosai is dealing with a farmer to explain the kingdom. That's what the Mosai is dealing with, with Moses here. That's why, if you remember, in Second Ezra, in Second Ezra, uh, what precept was that? In Second Ezra 14, from verse 3 to 6. God told Ezra that I, I showed Moses the signs of the times and showed him many and told him and told him many many wondrous things and showed him the signs of the times and told him some things you shall reveal and some things you shall hide. So those hidden things are the things that Moses wrote in parables, like we are seeing in Genesis, that most people don't understand. Some things are written literally, some things are written figuratively, or in parables, or in proverbs. And those literal things and proverbs are mixed together. That's why you see the kingdom is a puzzle. If you don't understand Paul, you cannot break down the kingdom. You understand what I'm saying? Because they are mixed together. Is that understood? All right, let's read. To the book of Genesis 2 8. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. Mm -hmm. And there he put the man whom he had formed. So he paid attention. So when the most high revealed paradise, then God now took the man and put him there. Okay? Which he has which he has created. So God took him and put him there. You understand? And let's read. Verse 9. And out of the ground. Now pay, now pay, now pay attention to verse 9. Wonders of our creation, the tree of life on this Sabbath lesson. A strong meat lesson, read. And out of the ground. And out of the ground. Mm -hmm. May the Lord grow. May the Lord grow. To grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. To grow every tree that is pleasant in the sight. To grow every tree that is pleasant in the sight. Out of the ground. He's not speaking about the physical planting of seed in the ground. To grow out of every tree for food to eat. That's not what he's saying there. That's why I took us back to Isaiah 61 verse 3. Where he said that Israel shall be called the planting of the Lord. 
where he said that is, they shall be called the trees of righteousness. Trees of righteousness. Trees of righteousness. Because the tree represents a righteous act or a righteous doing, which is referring to the commandment. Then he says the planting of the Lord. That's what he's referring to Israel. So God is saying, I plant Israel, the tree of righteousness, meaning I plant righteousness in them. So God is speaking in parables. So what God is telling Moses, he's telling Isaiah the same thing. The same mystery. Do you understand what I'm saying? I read it very slow. A lot of the ground mm -hmm. made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. Mm -hmm. To grow every tree that is pleasant. The pleasant thing that the most I made to grow are the commandments. Those every tree are the commandments. Righteous, righteous commandments. Not fiscal tree. You understand what I'm saying? Not fiscal tree. Read. And good for food. Mm -hmm. Then he says, and good for food. Give me John 6, 27. In Genesis, Genesis chapter 2, verse 9. Then he says, he says, and out of the ground, may the Lord to grow every place, every tree that is pleasant into the sight, good for food. So what is the most I saying there? Just, 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 uh, John 6, 27. Let's read it. In the book of John 6, 27. Uh -huh. Labor not for the meat which perisheth. So this is Christ speaking in parable, using food as a means of parable to explain the kingdom. So Christ said, labor not for the meat that perisheth. Is, is this thing about fiscal meat? Yeah. No. So Christ said, don't labor for the meat that perish, meaning the fiscal meat that perish and uh, that you eat. Let's go. But for the meat, we shall enjoy it. But labor time. for the meat. But labor for the meat, the food. The word meat, in, in, when you look at the strong concordance for that meat, it means food. So he says, labor for the meat that do what? That endure it unto everlasting life. So labor for the meat that endure it unto everlasting life. Everlasting life. Remember, Adam was living an everlasting life. Adam was immortal. But when he transgressed the commandment in 2nd Ezra chapter 3, from verse 6 to 7, what happened? The most I introduced death to Adam because Adam, when, when he received the bread, which is the Holy Spirit, he kept the commandment. But the moment he transgressed the commandment, what happened? Death came. Because it was the commandment, because it was the keeping of the commandment that gave him eternal life, that keep him instead to live immortal. You understand? Say, because the power of immortality is not in the food. The power of immortality comes from the most high God. When Adam was created, he was created immortal, not by means of food. Yes. <laughs> when Adam was created, he was created immortal, not by food that he eats. So the, when, when, when Christians are reading the tree of life or food, that's not what he's saying. It's, the food is not what is making him to live immortal. His commandment was, the, the, as long as Adam kept the commandment, it's very simple, that's why if you look at the tradition, you get it here. As long as Adam kept the commandment, he was immortal. Because the power of immortality comes from the world, the most high God. Give me John level 25. But, but finish up. Finish up, finish John 6, 27. Labor, labor not for the meat that which perish. So Christ said, labor not for the meat. Don't labor. Stop striving. Stop striving after carnal things. Okay? Because carnal things will not save you when it comes to the kingdom. Satan, Satan will use that carnal things and destroy you. Because Lucifer... In the heaven, Satan on the earth is the prince of this world. Like John 14 verse 30 tells you. He's the prince of this world. He, Satan is the masterminder. Or is the masterminder. That's why Christ called him Mammon. No man can serve two masters. For either you love the one or hate the other. Or else hold on to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and Mammon. Mammon just simply means wealth or things, material, materialistic things. That's what Mammon means. So when Christ says you cannot serve God and Mammon, what Christ says that you cannot serve two masters? Because there's only two masters. Is that Christ or the devil? So devil is the controller of Mammon, of the worldly things. So when Christ said, labor not for the meat that perish, because the, because the Israelite back then, okay, we are crossing seas, not minding if, if there will be, 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 be wave, strong wave to cross the sheep. So Israel were crossing sheep to come and eat food. Instead of them to cross the sheep, where Christ was at the other side of the, of the land, of the sea, to come and hear the gospel, they were, they, were, they were laboring, finding out to rent sheep to cross over in multitude. Okay, because they knew that Christ did a miracle where he fed the uh, beatitudes with five loaves and two fishes. So when they had the report, they not, they not cross over the waters. You see how they labor for canal things. They, they labor because of food, though. Yes. Just as you have today, people be laboring for, for palliative, yes. for palliative from governments. They will labor, they will even kill the election. They will, they will die for 5,000 five, 5, naira, mm. 10,000 10, because they are laboring for canal things. Yes. They will not use the same method of strive. And challenge to find the truth, truth of the kingdom. But when it comes to Canaan, they, they will fight themselves. They will throw bottles, they will break, they will choke themselves. So, what Christ was telling the Israelites, why are you laboring for Canaan to cross over the sea? What if the Most High God smite you from the sea and cause the wave to roar? You understand what I'm saying? And there's, and, and there's a strong wave and the ship sink. 
and you guys die because you want to come and labor for food you eat because you knew that I did miracle. So therefore, you, you, you now want to come and meet me so that you, I, I will now do miracle. You, you, you will show your face that you are hungry. So 